Hi, my name is Shelby Redfield Kilgore and I am a Korean adoptee and the filmmaker of all of these foster care and adoption videos on this YouTube channel. I just want to thank everyone that keeps returning to watch my videos and uh, to any newcomers, welcome and I hope you will stick with me on this journey about adoption education as well as check out my other videos that I have filmed since 2012. Um, the best way to support my work is to make sure to subscribe and ring that notifications bell so that you'll be notified when I upload new content on the channel and also to like the videos you watch and to comment on them. Uh, I love to see people's feedback and maybe new insight that they've learned and also just to let me know if there's anything you would like to see in this series and that I could try and cover. Today on Adoption Education, I'm going to be answering the question, why is it important to read adoption books? This is going to be a recurring question in this series where I feature one book at a time and sort of give my thoughts and reflections about it and maybe pieces that resonate with my own story about adoption. And to kick off this recurring question in this series, I'm going to be highlighting Rooted in Adoption, a collection of adoptee reflections. This is a book that I helped put together along with another adoptee named Veronica, and May 1st, 2021 marks the year anniversary of when it was first published. Growing up in the 1980s and 1990s, there honestly was not a lot of books about adoption or even just um, fiction books to, to read. And I was an avid reader, actually I still am. And so the only book that I can recall that sticks out in my mind, because my mom like really helped, you know, uh, to find the things that I was looking for um, about adoption and it was called Molly by any other name and it was about an Asian adoptee who decides to go on a search for her first mother and I think I read that like more than once and usually I don't read many books more than once and that's the only book I remember reading as a preteen about adoption that um, sort of helped me with my feelings and identifying the emotions that I was feeling and to also let me know that m that my longing to find my first mother, to know her, to know who I looked like, to where I came from, the reason why I was adopted, uh, the truth behind everything um, was normal. That I wasn't, not that I wasn't, wasn't normal, my parents told me that, but I wasn't the only one thinking that. There was a story, a book that I could see myself in. And there just wasn't a whole lot of that growing up. And so a big reason why I do this passion work in the adoption community is because I'm trying to create something that was lacking when I was growing up, these, these resources. Um, so not only with my filmmaking, uh, it's also reflected in helping with this book that I helped put together. When Veronica and I were putting together this book of adoptee reflections, we wanted to make sure that it was anonymous, so we only use non-identifying information. So you know the type of adoption, race, gender, age, location, and if it was an open or closed adoption. Rooted in Adoption has almost 50 reflections from adoptees coming from different ages, different types of adoption, and different perspectives, uh, varying from very positive to negative, from heartbreaking to heartwarming, and it really displays the very nuanced picture of adoption. And I resonated with so many of the uh, adoption stories that were shared in this book and I also am always eternally grateful for all the adoptees brave enough to come forward and share their story. Veronica also has been working on a Rooted in Adoption Reflections journal 
and she is releasing that on May 1st. And Veronica is a mental health counselor intern, and so she created this to go along with the, the book. And it's a free resource that you can download if you go to our Facebook group, Rooted in Adoption, and a link will be there for you to be able to download this journal for free. What I love about it is it asks you questions relating to adoption and sometimes not directly relating to adoption, but that might make you think about it. And journaling to me has been something I've done since I was a very little girl. I think my first journal was when I was five and it was one of those that you could uh, unlock with a key and lock with a key. It was, it was really cute. I still, have, I still have all my journals. I have like 30 of them. But journaling for me is a way to put down my thoughts and process them in a different way than talking to someone. And it really helps ground me and put things in perspective and it helps with my anxiety sometimes as well. So this journal kind of gives you prompts like adoption is and then you fill in the blank or um, some of the ones not specifically related to adoption but could lead to adoption. Um, I feel loved when so I'm excited for the release of this journal and I hope that you will go to our Facebook page, Rooted in Adoption, to download uh, this free journal on May 1st, as well as go to Book Baby, which I will include the link in the video description below to purchase the book at a discount for $10.99. Putting together Rooted in Adoption back in 2019 and early 2020, I feel like there's so many pieces that I resonated with and I wanted to share an excerpt or a couple of excerpts from the book and read them off. <laughs> so one of them is called, Honesty is the Best Policy. I find it hard to believe in love and that I am lovable. Being adopted has also prevented me from knowing how to love. Adoption taught me that I do not like dishonesty and from that I hate telling lies or being lied to. Being adopted makes it hard for me to form emotional attachments with people. The worst part about being adopted is it is very difficult for me to look at myself in the mirror. Every time I see myself, I see an adopted person. I feel as though I lost myself before I could become who I was or how I might have been. Journey of a Lifetime It's very hard for me to define adoption. Each member of the triad stands from a different viewpoint. As a foster parent and an adoptive parent myself, I'm keenly aware of how different the perspectives are. However, when broken down it's to its very simplest form for the sake of a definition, adoption is a relinquishing of one family through choice, termination, or coercion to create or add to another family. My earliest memory associated with being adopted is from preschool. Our class had a young boy come to our school to share about his disability. He was born without legs and proceeded to show us the tools and prosthetics he used. I found it fascinating and it was also my first exposure to someone with disabilities. However, at some point after that presentation, a teacher suggested to me that I should share about my adoption. Immediately within my four-year-old brain, the connection was made in my head that I was different, just like that boy with no legs, I was other. One question I get asked frequently about my own adoption is, am I grateful? My instinctual response to this is, am I grateful that I was given up for adoption? Absolutely not. Yes, many adoptees love their adoptive parents and lives. We are grateful. However, those lives are based upon the foundation that we were initially abandoned, rejected, or lost through termination by our biological parents, our family. That foundation of abandonment was the most difficult part of being adopted. Even now, as an adult, Having gone through trauma therapy, the fear of rejection still makes attempts to permeate my life, my decisions, and my relationships. It was not until I was 34 years old in one of my foster parent trainings that I heard the word trauma uttered. That word changed the trajectory of my life and I am on my way to healing. As an adoptive parent, I have learned that it is vital for adoptive parents to first deal with their own trauma and baggage before even entering into the adoption process. 
It is also vital to listen to the voice of adult adoptees as the experts and to continue to learn and educate oneself on adoption and the issues their children will face. Finally, they must never assume that an adopted child is not dealing with something or won't deal with an adoptee issue, simply because they haven't spoken about it, shown signs of it, or seem to be well-rounded. Healing from being adopted is a journey and will take an entire lifetime. I just want to thank you so much for making it to the end of this video and I will make sure to put in the video descriptions below a link to Book Baby and also to our Rooted in Adoption Facebook page. So make sure to go to both of those websites on May 1st to purchase the book at 10.99 if you haven't already and also download the uh, reflections journal uh, for free and the best way to support my work uh, to make these films about foster care and adoption is to like comment on any videos that you watch and subscribe to my youtube channel and ring that notifications bell